Hi, folks. We're back with the... It turns out, Joe Skousen is my most listened to guest. Um, people like him more than other guests. Don't, don't even analyze it. There's something truthful, and we have banter, and it seems to work. Look, Joel, I'm just going to go into a report. Is Russia the target of a false flag bombing in Syria? What you're saying is there are reports of two USA A-10 attack aircraft flying directly into Aleppo to bomb civilian air, uh, areas and blame the Russians. Now, look, uh, one last thing before you die. Turkish Prime Minister, and by the way, his name is real Ahmed Davutoluku, all right, blamed Russia for the strikes in Azaz. No, the Americans killed, you know, mostly a dozen doctors and medical staff, and it fessed up. They said, oh, oh, we made a boo-boo, we bombed them, our mistake. What we're talking about is Idlib. That's what the... the current blame is. Away you go. There I did it. Well, thanks, Barry, for that introduction. Uh, it's good to be with you. Um, you know, the globalists have really been set back in their attempts to take down Assad uh, by Russia's intervention, and uh, they have been winning the war. It's a difficult war to win for Russia because once you allow, uh, from the Syrian regime point of view, once you allow infiltrators to take over a city and you know it's not like a mass army coming across the desert and surrounding the city it's they just infiltrate and all of a sudden they bring out their arms and they start taking over a city and once they do that it's very very difficult to root them out because you end up having to destroy the city either through house to house fighting or artillery strikes or airstrikes and so that's why Aleppo is is really in bad shape right now it well, should everywhere be everywhere is in bad shape right now. But you're saying the U.S. smuggled in old chemical weapons via Turkey of uh, to, uh, essentially to blame Assad and the Russians. Well, what you're saying, if I understand your thesis, and blame the Russians. Now, what's going on here? Look, out of chaos, can you make some order out of this chaos? Well, in order to in order to do so, I've got to go back and give some background on what's oh, going on, on on why the the United States, on behalf of the globalists, went out to attack Syria. Uh, there was a um, a high financier in the city of London who was invited to a meeting of what turned out to be globalists discussing global situations. Uh, because he was such a high financier, I guess the people who were running the meeting just thought he was one of them. He thought he was a vetted globalist, but he was not. Who uh, was he? Um, the, the name is still anonymous, but um, it goes uh, back three or four years when I published um, the, uh, the interview that he had. And it rang, rang very, very true. He published it to a UK, a British... Um, site that was anti-globalist and uh, I'm not prepared you know to, to go back and no, reference okay so it's um, you're but saying it's, it's reliable yeah I believe it was reliable because of the of what he said he heard and uh, uh, it, it's very important to know that from a globalist, Anglo-American globalist situation, the city of London, and this is not the greater metro area of London, this is the actual smaller ancient city of London. It has its own mayor, it has its own structure, and it's basically where all the financial controls of globalism take place um, in, in the European uh, arena. What, what did he claim? Well, what he did, he claimed that they were very displeased in the meeting and these were their words, that Israel had not yet attacked Iran. Iran? That's Iran right. is a thousand miles away. No, no. no. Let me just right. finish. The, the important point about was that they, as they were discussing this, he said, they said, ever since 2002, Iran, uh, Israel's been assigned to start a war with Iran so that we can go in and finish them off. Uh, 
And as you know, uh, Israel... You is think the... wars are that easy to start? I mean, really, you can bomb and they'll, they'll react, but it's not a war. Israel's a thousand miles away from Iran. How would yeah. this war start? The port war is, was going to start as it had been projected for years where Israel would do a preemptive strike on Iran's military or nuclear facilities. Now, as you know, Barry, Benjamin Netanyahu has those plans on the table. They've been, you know, negotiating for flyover rights, for Saudi Arabia and other things. There's a lot of evidence that that strike has been on the table for many years. And that's what was confirmed in this meeting by this accidental uh, invitee to a meeting that he wasn't supposed to be at. But here's my point. Yes. Uh, Israel, the reason that they weren't attacking Iran is because they wanted the globalists to get rid of Syria and their weapons of uh, their chemical weapons and their missiles because if Iran retaliated against uh, Israel, it would of course be mostly through Syria as an ally of Iran retaliating being right now next that to makes sense that makes actual ground sense that's right and what I'm saying is is that that happened. That bulking of Israel happened about three and a half years to a three and a quarter. And that's why the U.S. declared that they were going to do a Libyan-style no-fly zone over, uh, is, uh, over Syria. And as everybody knows, it wasn't just a no-fly zone in Libya. It was an actual attack under the cover of a no-fly zone. We had special forces in there. The U.S. sent in cruise missiles. Uh, they undermined Gaddafi. And they were going to do the same thing basically to take down Assad. So John Kerry, Secretary of State, gets in front of a London press conference three years ago, and one savvy reporter asks him, he says, hey, look, it's very obvious you're going to attack Syria. Is there anything Syria can do to, to, to stop this attack? Is there anything they can do to keep you from attacking them? And Kerry just off the top of his head said, yeah, they could give up their chemical weapons and we wouldn't attack. And the next day... Well, that Syria seems fair. What's that? That seems fair. If yeah, that's the, you've got to remember if that, that was it. Okay. No yeah, more remember that weapons. Kerry, Kerry, yes. just talking off the op uh, top of his head, he was caught unawares. He didn't realize that Syria would accept, and they did the next day. And so the U.S. globalists were stuck. They couldn't attack. They couldn't throw in their no-fly zone because Syria had accepted. Now you remember that part of the justification for this no-fly zone was to stop Assad supposedly from attacking his own people with chemical weapons. And as I pointed out in this brief, this current brief that you referred to, uh, and the evidence no, is... No, it's an important one. Just um, It helps sort of my world a bit. All right? It's a very big, big mishmash um, going on there. And this is actually putting some reality back in it. But I'm going to ask you again. What was Idlib and what was Azaz? And why is Turkey blaming Russia for Azaz when the Americans accepted responsibility? There are problems here. Well, there are, but what I, uh, before I get to that, I have to go through right. this main I'm, point, this main point that Assad was very much aware that the U.S. was looking for an excuse to attack him three years ago. There is no way on two or three counts that he would have used chemical weapons on his own people. First of all, chemical weapons are area weapons. They are not point weapons. You cannot be precise with them. They spread. Uh, so you don't use them where there's a mixed population in a guerrilla warfare. You only use them in open troops out away from civilian areas. So it's unlikely militarily that anyone would use chemical weapons within the suburbs of Damascus. Who is think. dropping those barrels on the suburbs of Syria? I've seen them, you've seen them. Uh, who's doing it then? What, the barrel bombs? Yeah! I mean, yeah. they're chemical weapons and we've got them on, you know, no, on no, no, no. no. The, barrel, the barrel weapons are not chemical weapons. The barrel, the, no, the barrel weapons are kind of like napalm type, makeshift napalm weapons. Oh, they, that's better. All well, right. but it, it's it's more of a, a point weapon. It doesn't drift in the air 
uh, through a city street like chemical weapons do. But my point was this, that Assad is not a stupid man. He's a Western-educated person. He would not be stupid enough to use chemical weapons, even though it's unlikely militarily you would do that. It's absolutely impossible that a smart man would hand rush hand the U.S. the excuse to attack him by using chemical weapons. And we know now that those chemical weapons came in through Turkey. They were actually provided by the CIA, old chemical weapons, to Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia sent some of them in, and uh, the CIA gave some of them to Turkey to send in to the rebels. And they Whose planes dropped them? No, no, they weren't dropped by planes. Uh, uh, okay, I'll leave that hang. I've seen the video news where you see planes dropping barrels and then you see no, smoke. No, you're, con don't confuse barrels with these chemical weapons. These are not the same. Barrel well, that's what they're claiming is they're full of chemical weapons. No, yeah, but that's that's absolutely untrue. <laughs> All right. I, I, I respect your point of view, but a lot of people believe it. Well, as I say, the barrel bomb, uh, the chemical weapons, you don't have barrel sized chemical weapons. Uh, it's a very indiscriminate uh, use of them. You have them in warheads, artillery warheads, or you have them in, uh, you know, portable type bombs that you set up, and that's what they smuggled in, uh, portable type warheads that they set off in, in Damascus. But that was ancient history. The barrel bombs are a recent phenomenon that they're attacking Assad, and those are napalm type weapons, not chemical weapons. Someone's, I think, just getting their news stories mixed up if they think that there's a relationship between the barrel bombs and chemical weapons. The chemical Clearly weapons. Clearly, you don't want to be at the bottom of an attack uh, on your house of this barrel. I um, mean, they're not humane weapons. Well, they're no less humane than any bomb that you're going to drop on a on a house, and uh, uh, you know they're claiming civilian. Um, deaths. There are the U.S. has been involved in civilian deaths in every one of their drone attacks for the past, you know, five or six years, uh, and so it's a little bit hypocritical to say, "Hey, you've got civilian casualties" when you're fighting a guerrilla war within a city. I mean, look what Israel had to do going into the Palestinian areas to root out. They had obviously to kill um, some civilians in the areas where they bombed. Um, so that's part of war, but I'm just trying to make the case that with the recent attacks on hospitals and other things, I mean, the Russians yes. know the Russians know that the U.S. and the globalists are trying to get an excuse to condemn them for their activities in there. They are extremely careful about their targeting, and they have never, uh, you know, uh, target a hospital. We happen to know from the previous week, and I covered that in the February 12th World Affairs Brief, that the the Russian radar track two A-10s from uh, in Sirklik Air Force Base that came into Aleppo and bombed, and that was in fact an attempt to blame it on the Russians. But in fact, U.S. A-10s were in there doing a bombing run. And now, once again, this would be the Idlib Hospital. This is the one where in Munich everyone was really ticked off that the Russians attacked a hospital. It's not a Zaz. That was the Americans attacking a hospital. Um, no, but there was also an attack in Aleppo the week oh, prior. Oh, that's a suburb. It, okay, Aleppo. But that was, okay. uh, don't confuse, we're not talking about uh, uh, Idlib yet. We're talking about Aleppo. First of all, that, we, that the Russians tracked two A-10s from Encyclic coming in and attacking there. So first of all, we have to ask, what are the U.S. planes doing in there? This is basically Russians, you know, attacking the uh, the rebels in there. Who, in other words, the Syrians don't have troops at a level, so who is the U.S. A who are they bombing? They're not bombing Russian troops, they're not bombing Syrian troops, they're not bombing their own they're rebels, they are they? They were deliberately trying to create an atrocity That's uh, that somehow would go back and blame the world would blame Russia for it. That's right. And the attacks on Aleppo a week, a week and a half ago, were done to create civilian casualties, and they did try to blame that on Russia, until Russia brought out the evidence that these were A-10s from encircling. So, while the Russians have not brought out similar evidence of what happened in Idlib, I'm saying 
It's the U.S. that has the history of bombing hospitals. There's been never a Russian bombing, uh, deliberate bombing of a hospital. Uh, we don't even have evidence of deliberate bombing of, of civilian areas uh, because that, we know, was a, you know, a U.S. attack into Aleppo. So I'm that's saying that the, the Russians are kind of the good guys. Well, they I'm are. Doing my best. I'm doing my best here. You're saying they're being blamed, but in essence, they're far more moral and humane than the Americans. What I'm saying is that it really doesn't have anything to do with the humaneness of the individual people, whether the Russian pilots or American pilots. It's who's giving the orders. Russians are not giving the orders to bomb civilian areas or hospitals. And the U.S. is and has been using false flag operations for years. You know, I've gone on record in my World Affairs Brief that 9-11 was a U.S. black operation from beginning to end. And we've got the evidence to prove that. Yeah, I know. And so this is nothing for them to, th to bomb a hospital and blame it on the Russians. But they're desperate. And that was showed in the Munich Security Conference. John McCain yes. went uh, apoplectic about the Russians. And it shows that the globalists are frantic to try to discredit the Russians and get them out of Syria. I don't think it's going to work. they uh -huh. got a ceasefire. It goes in effect this Saturday. You can go out in the streets and there's no more firing. Um, huh. Well, you know, I have never heard, Barry, so much commentary in the news about people skeptical about this ceasefire meaning anything. In other words, there are so many disparate, different types of rebel groups, and this agreement has been made without consultation with them. It's ever anyone's guess of whether or not they are going to abide by this. Uh, it doesn't include al-Nusra. It doesn't include ISIS. So the Russians can continue to bomb if they... No, so they can't. They agree yes, if they say that they're attacking al-Nusra is not a part of the thing, or, or ISIS, they can continue to bomb. Ah, uh, that's no ceasefire. Well, that's why people are skeptical about this ceasefire. And frankly, I'm surprised that the Russians are agreeing to this because they have everything to lose and the side that is being pulverized by the Syrian that army. That would be the rebels that the, the United States backed. Rebels, backed. Yeah. They're the only ones that have anything to gain, and that's why I'm sure that the U.S. is trying well, they to can recoup. get supplies. They can do some recouping. Uh, that's the best they got. They can be rearmed. Um, you're saying that this ceasefire is essentially to get the rebels back on their feet. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the... the the Chinese pulled this, uh, the Koreans pulled this in the Korean War. Uh, every government who uh, you know, has tried to gain advantage in an attack on the West has used this phony ceasefire to regroup. And right now, the U.S. is using it on the Russians, who are experts in how to use this tactic. So I'm surprised, frankly, that they gave in to this tactic. Why then? Why did they give in to this tactic? Well, yeah, I think, I think that they realize this is a propaganda game and that they have more to gain by initially agreeing to the ceasefire and re knowing with some confidence that it's going to be broken and that it really won't amount to much. Um, that I think that's probably why they went, they're went. they going ahead with it. But once again, I say there's extreme skepticism on all sides here that this is going to last anything more than a few hours. Well, once again, you look at the background there's, we're not told anything, okay, outright. You know the bombing the Russians uh, began, oh, what, three months ago, let's say. Netanyahu and Putin had a meeting. The next day the bombing began. You think Netanyahu said, don't touch Syria, we like them. You wouldn't <laughs> dare bomb Syria. Obviously, there was coordination here, obviously. Well, I'm not sure it was friendly coordination. Uh, what the coordination that I surmised happened was that the Russians agreed at least they would keep the Israelis informed of any bombing that they were going to do, you know, close to the Israeli border. Um, oh, that's what you came up with, huh? Yeah. Uh, it's not like we won't intervene and it's okay with us and stuff like that, but all right. Uh, but you got to remember that... Mild all right. You know, Netanyahu is a, is a globalist, Barry, as you know. 
Uh, he's working for the U.S. and he's every time he goes in there and bombs Syria, you know, he has U.S. approval to do that and back. Uh, so there's no way that Putin going in to interfere with the globalist agenda in Syria is going to make a backdoor deal with Israel. That's like making a backdoor deal with uh, the U.S. Maybe not. You know what these look? I get uh, alternative views, and apparently. Uh, Netanyahu, who has had a real falling out with Obama, and basically he's chosen Putin over Obama. I've I've had this all over the place. Yeah, I don't believe that, Barry. I believe that that's only for show. I think that's political theater, so that uh, whatever the Israel or the U.S. does doesn't reflect on each other. Uh, you have to remember that yes. after this is very important after the. Um, Syria, um, or after the attack on Syria was taken off the table, after the London uh, left London press conference, that's when the U.S. made their first overture to Iran to start this nuclear weapons agreement. And Iran was frankly surprised at this. The U.S. is coming to them, said, "Let's make a deal." And as you know, they went through three iterations of this nuclear deal, and each time. They made an agreement at each level, and then the U.S. made an announcement claiming that Iran agreed to something that they hadn't agreed to, and Iran had recordings of these well, meetings. Well, that fits in with what I just said, that uh, Netanyahu was being screwed by Obama and chose Putin. This fits. No, it doesn't fit. What yeah. I'm saying is, is that the entire nuclear agreement of the U.S. with Iran is a trap. It is merely to excuse the U.S. for standing down from their attack mode. You know they've had three aircraft carrier groups off Iran for a decade for a decade now, and it's an excuse for them to stand down while they take out Syria. Now the U the, the Russians have really put a monkey wrench in that agenda by slowing down, if not stopping, absolutely that takedown of Syria, and so. The game plane that's going on. Remember that Israel is a globalist entity, and they were going well, to. Well, let's no, just say the highest levels of their government and not their people. Let's no, do a no, little excusing absolutely. here. Okay. Absolutely. I, I meant I'm talking about the Israeli government, is a lackey for the globalists. They were going to attack Iran. It's been stopped now, just because Syria is in the crosshairs. But you can, I can tell you that that nuclear agreement with Iran is set up so that at any time the U.S. can declare them in default. They put in uh, uh, conventional weapons as part of that nuclear agreement, uh, which Iran has already been violating. And the only reason the U.S. isn't calling them on it right now is because they haven't taken care of Syria, and so Iran is off the table. And so there is this phony. I think phony war between Netanyahu and and Obama, which is kind of uh, allowing the U.S. to say, you know, we're not for attacking Iran. We are taking the diplomatic approach, but I think it's political theater. I don't think there's a rift at all. In fact, oh, Obama, no doubt about it. No doubt we're watching the party, and we're not watching the bar. All right, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, well, Obama, you know, isn't running anything in this country. Obama is a puppet. He takes his orders from the National Security Council advisors, and they take their orders from Henry Kissinger and Associates. Daily marching orders. This is a conspiracy of power, and you have puppet presidents like Obama. They've got so much dirt on Obama, he doesn't dare do a thing unless they, you know, tell him to jump. All right, we're going to go to the... Oh, this is our break. Now, folks, as usual, we've got a very lively banter. I don't know what Joel brings out in me, um, but it's not skepticism. It's just such a wide argument. And you know what? We're going to be back in three minutes, and we'll take this wider, as wide as we can. Uh, this is Joel Skousen with Barry Chammer. See you in three Since the beginning of time, 
Kings have sought it. Nations have fought for it. It has been traded. It has been borrowed. It has been purchased. It has been stolen. There's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity. Invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's CrossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. All right, folks, we've got a very, very strong and confusing interview with Joel Skousen. First of all, all my books are available at lulu.com. That's www.lu.com. There's a search box right in my last name, Chamish, C-H-A-M-I-S-H. That'll get you to my books. And my website is barrychamish.com. I think David Salmon is still hanging in there with it. And Joel, plug yourself. Uh, my website is worldaffairsbrief.com, and listeners can get a free sample copy of uh, the latest World Affairs Brief by e emailing me at editor at worldaffairsbrief.com. All right, let's expand this war, which, by the way, I'm not going to even mention refugees. I mean, that's just... Uh, you're talking about upsetting all of Europe, especially Germany, uh, with with Syrian refugees, and that's another issue. I'm going to talk war right now. You've got a business 
Well, you've got an air base at Inserlik um, that the Turks are using to bomb Kurds in Syria. Please expand on this. Well, you know, they've had a long-running battle with uh, Kurds who want basically an independent uh, swath of uh, land to run their own nation. And part of that would include uh, southern Turkey as well as northern Syria. Um, and so the Turks have, uh, have been using the excuse of fighting terrorism to also fight and, and bomb the heck out of, out of the Kurds. I mean, the, the, the Turks wouldn't even assist the Kurds when they were fighting ISIS right across the border. They wanted them to fall, and of course that's not surprising knowing that the, the Turks are a puppet of the globalist funding ISIS, uh, which I believe is a yes. U.S. government and British creation. Uh, no, it's not. Creation. This one I, I did well through Debka. Um, they were shut down for three months for reporting it. No, it was American special forces in northern Jordan along with Israeli, the IDF. They funded and they trained the original ISIS. And by the way, Debka is down again. Um, more reports I'm getting. Uh, the fact is, it was maybe the British deep in the background, but on the ground, it was Northern Jordan, American Special Forces, IDF. They're the ones who gave the training to the first 1,100 people that eventually went to Turkey and became a brand new army, ISIS. That's well, my... That, yeah, and, and I agree with that, uh, Barry. That does not explain, though, how ISIS got up to fifty to 60,000 people prior to the invasion of Iraq. And I believe that basically that the U.S. had got... Israeli Arabs who are the best infiltrators into the you know terrorist world to run this ISIS show uh, you know infiltrate themselves and become the leaders of these and they basically said okay take about half of the jihadists that they had in Syria you're going to be called ISIS now and they gave them separate funding and separate uh, you know channel of leadership and set them off on this rampage and Without that was this funding there wouldn't have been an ISIS that's why Debka got shut down for three months. They reported it. And that was it for them. We're having problems with our website. That's not what happened. They're an actual intelligence site. Lo and behold, they're for real. Well, you know, I've talked to, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, who runs Debka when I was in Israel, and he admitted that he gets almost all his information from U.S. and Israeli intelligence. And he okay, doesn't have we've got a conscience insider intelligence. I'm hoping. I'm, I'm just he, hoping. He, he, he admitted to me he did not have the staff to check out whether or not these things were right. And he's got a pretty spotty record, uh, you know, in I terms know. of. I know that part. But he's got a very good record of being shut down. And he exactly. got shut down after uh, making the report on Northern Jordan, American Special Forces, IDF, training the first ISIS. That was them. Well, and that was a very good piece of, that was a leak, you know, and showed that he was sincere. I'm just saying that, you know, he, he gets both true information and he gets disinformation from, uh, you know, U.S. intelligence sources that are trying to, uh, you know, they, they have a whole system of trying to uh, poison the internet in the United States with, uh, you know, bogus All conspiracy right. theories. All right. uh, let's skip the possibility it was wrong. I don't think it was, frankly, but neither here nor there. Now, Wait a minute. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that he gets a mix. A lot of stuff that he's gotten from U.S. and, and Israeli intelligence was flat That's out wrong. planted. They, I know, I know where you're That's coming right. from. But that was true about the Jordanian base, you know, U.S. Jordanian uh, training of jihadists that they turned into ISIS, but I think it had to be even larger than that in terms of oh, it had to be taking it required, exist, Oh gosh, it required so much money. And telling them basically, you become ISIS now, and they gave them new leadership. And uh, uh, but All right, let's, I'm going to ask your opinion: Is America in this war, as we're trying to understand it, pro Kurdish? Or are they anti-Kurdish? Or maybe they couldn't care less. But Turkey is bombing the hell out of the Kurds. America's allies? 
explain all this. I, I think that the uh, Americans are would be neutral to the Kurds uh, except for the fact that they are dependent on Turkey to become their their puppet supplier for ISIS and other rebels in in Syria. So they cannot offend to boost the Kurds for fear of getting you know in a row with uh, with Turkey. Uh, you know, Turkey is is got a problem. Or I'm sorry, the the Kurds have a major play uh, in the the northern Iraq uh, period. And the U.S. has not heretofore sustained their desires for independence, although they have given them some aid and uh, did talk the Iraqis. No one's promised them that if you stick by us, we'll get you a state. No one made that promise to them. That's right. And in fact, I'm saying the U.S. isn't backing. I think it's legitimate. I don't think Iraq should have ever been a single state that was created after World War I. It should have been three separate peoples so that you didn't have this internecine conflict between these ethnic groups. I think the Kurds deserve to have their own nation state. So do the Sunnis and so do the Shiites. But well, now meanwhile, Turkey is shelling the hell out of them and trying to prevent it. I think. That's right. I think. That's right, and the U.S. isn't stopping Turkey because they are beholding to Turkey. Turkey is their lackey uh, in terms of, uh, you know, funneling arms and munitions into both ISIS and the U.S.-backed rebels and al-Nusra, all of that. I mean, Turkey is really the bad guy in this entire... Um, well, you know, Erd, middle, now middle let's East. go back to Turkey. Erdogan, he's claiming that uh, his air force is bombing the Kurds because... They're blocking his supply lines. Now, look, what supply? Oil from Iraq? What supply? Sort <laughs> this out for us, okay? That's right. Supplies to the rebels and ISIS. That's what they're blocking. And they are blocking. All right. If anyone can understand all this, you're better than I am. I'll bet you're, and this is between us, I'll bet you Joel's got a few questions. And <laughs> leave it at that. What you've got right now is why on earth can Turkey knock down Russian planes? Two of them. They apparently they cross their border by a kilometer or something. They knocked down two Russian jets, and I think they got away with it. Except there was a real bombing in a, a man like two weeks ago of of a military convoy. And they blame the Kurds. Why not blame the Russians? They have every reason to retaliate. Well, I don't think the Turks want to tackle the Russians, especially since NATO has kind of telegraphed to them that we're not going to back you if you get into a shooting war with Russia. So right now, Barry, there's a tremendous amount of hype on the Internet about an imminent land invasion of Saudi Arabian troops and Turkish troops into Syria. And frankly, I don't believe it. Why Saudi? Okay, let's let's make this puzzle. Why would the Saudis want to invade with their troops into Syria? Well, we've got to remember that the globalists have this agenda of taking down Bashar al-Assad and Syria, so that they can get back to the uh, the agenda of taking down Iran as an mil independent military power. And remember, that's the reason the globalists are after Iran, is because it's the only Muslim country that is threatening to be self-sufficient in arms, clear up through nuclear weapons. And they will not tolerate that. They've always used Muslims as cannon fodder from World War One, World War Two, and they don't want them to be an independently armed and power. And somehow this relates to the Saudis Yes, Lanny. it does, because the Saudis, once again, are also lackeys for the globalists, and they, for example, are in Yemen right now, trying to destroy the Yemeni uh, revolt there, and they're losing. And so I find it hard to believe that the Saudis can uh, get into Syria in terms of a mass invasion. But you've got to remember that the globalists are going to do something. They're not going to take no for an answer. They're not going to let the Russians save Assad without trying to do something. But my feeling is that if either Turkey or uh, uh, Saudi Arabia tried to do a land invasion in there to take down Assad in the name, of course, of fighting ISIS, that's the excuse for the invasion, they would be easy targets for the Russians if they were in fact started... The Russians? 
All right, easy explain targets. this. Explain Listen. this. Easy All right, targets. you've got somebody in Syria. Why would the Russians care? The Russians are determined to stop the globalist agenda of taking down a, a, a Syria, all right, as a Russian client state, as an independent anti, you know, globalist state. Uh, the Saudis and the Turkeys are on board with globalism, and they're you know, going to do the bidding of what they're ordered to do. If there was a land invasion, I'm saying, it's it's easy for air power to take out that invasion, both tanks and troops. Very very easy because they are uh, concentrated in waves that come across the border. It's not true with guerrillas. You know, when guerrillas infiltrate Aleppo, once they're in there, you can't just bomb them to death without destroying the whole city. But you can... Well, you've next... pretty well done that. Yes. I've seen the pictures. It doesn't look like a nice place to live. No, no. I, I'm saying that that's what happens. But they're not going to let that happen. They're not going to let troops come across the border in mass without striking them in the open when it's easy to defeat them. That's what I'm saying. And so it'd be stupid to do a land invasion when you've got Russian air power with air superiority. In the, in the region. All right, you're feeling very secure that there's order in this mess. Um, I want to go back. Uh, we started with Azaz and Idlib. Two hospitals were bombed. One, the Americans got caught. The Doctors Without Borders accused them and they fessed up. That was Azaz. What is Idlib? What is going on with bombing doctors? Well, you know, at this stage, all we can know is that the Russians wouldn't have done it and the Syrians wouldn't have done it because they know that the U.S. is just looking for an excuse to attack them based upon civilian or medical casualties. I mean, they'd have to be insane. One sicko in America says, let's bomb a hospital. <laughs> and later on, they got caught, but it doesn't matter. This is what America's planning. But you have to remember that America is trying to make enemies in the world. They're trying to establish the reputation. Well, as they're the doing a great job at that. The bully of the world. That's the reputation they want because ultimately, Barry, and I know you sometimes disagree with this, but they're look, looking to start a third world war. Not start it, but they want to induce it. They want Russia and China to strike the U.S. military so that they can get Americans into a new world order. And in order to do that, they've got to hand Russia and China the excuse that there's a bully out there in the world that needs to be taken care of. And that's exactly what why Russia is so popular in their intervention with Syria. They're taking on the bully of the U.S. that continues to intervene in the name of democracy, but everybody knows it's not about democracy. Well, the Russian, well, uh, the prime minister uh, said we've entered a new Cold War on... I suspect he's right. Um, that being the case, why would you want to? All right? Unless you wanted another war, why would you want to? Well, but you've got to remember that Russia, and that's the reason why they reacted very mildly to the shoot down of their aircraft by, well, by they Turkey. they might have blown up Ankara. Yeah, but uh, they, uh, they're not ready to take on the West yet. They're at least five to eight eight years away from being ready to take on the West. And that's why you see Russia using stealth invasions of Ukraine and other, you know, post-Soviet states uh, rather than direct invasion. They don't want to provoke a war right now until they're ready. And when they're ready, it won't be a conventional war. It'll start with a preemptive nuclear strike. And they're also waiting for China to get up to speed. On to be Kiev? Ready. I mean, are we really, really talking... A nuke over Kiev? No, no, on American military targets, or perhaps wow. some in the UK. They want to take out submarine bases and missile bases, and any way that the West can retaliate uh, in a large degree, and they want to then blackmail the West into submission. This is going to be a very smart, uh, what they think is a smart strategy, but you can't, you know, coerce the U.S. unless you take cut them down to size with a preemptive nuclear strike on military and missile forces. And meanwhile, Turkey is determined to eradicate the Kurds in this logical war going on. And I'm not going to go to Syria. 
I'm sorry, Libya and uh, Benghazi and 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 this this woman, you know, she had a fair. Uh, what's her name? Yoko Ono came out that she had an affair, an intimate relationship with with Hillary Clinton. She came out with that this week. You're aware of that, right? I, I was not. Oh, good. You've got something new. Look it up. The yeah. fact is, she sat in the president's uh, press room and watched Benghazi happen. Now, I saw a movie that tried to cover it up, a terrible movie that the Americans, let's put it this way, what was Ambassador Stevens doing in Benghazi? You tell me that. What was the question? Ambassador Stevens, who got knocked out in Benghazi, and Hillary Clinton was apparently giving the order not to rescue him. What was going on? Well, there was a stand-down order, and uh, Congressman Kurt Gowdy says he has three witnesses to the stand-down order. Interestingly enough, the two generals who were relieved of command because of refusing to go forward, like General Ham refusing to, to give in to the stand-down order, have denied that there's a stand-in order. I think they've been threatened and their pensions have been threatened. But there are three witnesses and, and unfortunately Gowdy is not um, revealing who they are. Uh, I mean, there's a tremendous amount of pressure to cover this up because of Hillary Clinton's role as in running for president. Once again, you've got a joke for a campaign. I mean, this is a circus. And she's, you know, better if she goes against Trump, she'll be the next president. She's sitting on all kinds of garbage here in the Middle East. You don't want her near the place. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but the reason I think the powers that be are reluctant to have Hillary in office just because she would actually try to run the presidency. They want more compliant puppets like George W. Bush or Barack Obama. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of dirt on her. They can keep her in her, in her place if they have to. But... Uh, uh, I, I still think... Yoko they, Ono can keep her in her place. <laughs> but she, well, I, her mouth. she said they had a very intimate relationship and she's very happy because this is going to be terrific for the gay coalition. Two days ago, four days ago, she came out with this. Well, I will look that up. But I'll, I'll tell you, I think originally before Trump came along, and they're still trying, they want to give the Americans a, a controlled Republican president and that will, they hope, dampen down all the fever, uh, the anti-Obama and anti-democratic fever. Yes, in the and this is not a real election. This is a hilarious joke. And anyone who goes to vote is voting for a hilarious clown. All right, look, I have an issue I have to get to. We're going to get off the Middle East. I'm getting excited even, but I want to do... You did a whole report on Anthony Scalia, and I've been getting every single conspiracy theory in the book, which I don't buy, and I'm going to tell you why, and you're going to cut me down. If you're going to, they all say the same thing. He was found with a pillow on his head. If you're going to murder by suffocating with a pillow, do you leave the pillow on his face? I mean, okay. Well, as I pointed out, Barry, in the brief, I made that exact same argument. If you're trying to make it look like there was no struggle and the sheets were completely unruffled, then why leave the pillow on the head? Now, John Poindexter, the owner, revised his view. And that is not the same guy that we know from the history books. That's right. Uh, I said that in World of Third Three as well. Poindexter. All right. But he said the pillow was at the top of his head, not on the head. That was his clarification. He may have done that because of all the conspiracy theories. But, you know, it is very, very strange that, you know, they've declared him dead, uh, you know, without seeing the body, declared it a heart attack uh, without any autopsy. It's very, very strange. Uh, well, the family has the right... Look, this sounds like Patton already. Uh, Patton's wife didn't want an autopsy, and it just led to... it. Look... There were lots of motives for killing Pat. There were no means. I, I'm, I'm seeing the same thing here. It's not a good conspiracy theory, this Scalia. Well, and I am not saying that I'm on board that, too, but I did present in the brief the evidence that, uh, you know, looks uh, rather suspicious of why no autopsy was called for. I mean, 
the the medical examiner, or the justice of the peace, or the judge involved has the right to declare an autopsy, even if the family doesn't want it. If that's their are. strongest uh, point um, in in suspicion is there was no autopsy order. Is that number one? Well, combined with the fact that the judge declared, uh, you know, the death uh, non-foul play without an investigation. There's been no investigation about that. I mean, there could have been dozens of ways to do away with the, you know, including injection, uh, you know, uh, even suffocation uh, would have shown in the eyeballs and the expanded blood vessels and things. No check was done by a doctor even for those simple things. Joel, I'm getting report. one from Israel. Uh, apparently, Scalia defied the Supreme Court that a young boy wanted his passport to read. He was born in Jerusalem, Israel, and this, uh, he wasn't allowed to, uh, for whatever reason. Scalia said this is an abomination. That was one of the motives. I mean, I'm getting motives everywhere. I'm just really not happy with, with the means. Well, as I say, we just don't know, and we won't ever know because, you know, the body isn't available and there will be no investigation. Um, but uh, as I pointed out, Scalia, as all Supreme Court justices, uh, you know, have, they have uh, dirt uh, on them. Uh, they sure. are controlled. Um, I, I said in the brief how there was a, a major case that came before the Supreme Court about Vince Foster's murder. Uh, you know, contesting the suicide thing, and he he just laughed it off the that stage. Goes back to Hillary Clinton. If you want to go Vince Foster, you're right back to Hillary. That's right. But I don't believe that Hillary ordered that death. I think the protectors around the Clintons uh, did so because he was softening and was going to be subpoenaed before Congress and perhaps would have revealed their secret bank accounts that he had set up in Switzerland through so Mark Rich. So in other words, Joe's going to be voting for Hillary. Well, not me. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, what I meant by motives, good one. He was the only one to stand up for Israel, let the kid's passport actually read where he was born. And he defied the court. That was the motive. It's not going to make... No, that's not a strong motive. But no, there is it's a, not. You know, there's a powerful motive in the fact that, you know, to destroy the balance on the Supreme Court and allow Obama to... Uh, name a new liberal justice will forever change the direction of law in the United States. And we won't win as a conservative constituent anything more ever again in this country. That's my prediction on the court. All right. I say he can't get a justice through Congress. I say he, there's no way he can actually, before he leaves office, appoint anyone and get away with it. Well, he could use a recess appointment. Um, and get away with it. And, uh, you know, eight out of nine recess appointments have been finally, uh, eventually confirmed. I'm surprised he didn't use the recess appointment this past weekend when, when, when he had a chance. Uh, but, you know, you it know could. What? Okay. Yeah. I see what you're saying, and it's still not strong enough for me. I think he was an old man who died. There, I said. And it's, and it's very possible. As I said, my brother played tennis with him less than Oh, oh Joel, I'm sorry to say this. As usual, my listeners really like you. Um, you're my the most popular guest. So this was Joel Scouse and and people. Joel, tell people how to reach you fast. Worldaffairsbrief.com. Perfect. Go to worldaffairsbrief.com and we are at libertyarchives.com for one week. Thank you, Joel. Another great show. Thank Good you, night, folks. See you next time. Visit crossTheBorder.org, C R O S S, crossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book. The rapture will be canceled. That's crossTheBorder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them.
Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Cancelled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for Missionary Radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening